problem. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ayan, sige. Sorry kayo, Joanna. All right. So, we'll now continue again with the remaining uh, techniques. No? All right. And I believe um, we finished off with this. No? We left. Uh, this is where we left off your egg counting procedures. All right, so we're going on to start with your egg counting procedures for stool. Uh, again, egg counting procedures, we perform these procedures for the main purpose of assessing uh, the intensity of infection. Um, and we usually perform this for your helminths, no? your helminthiasis, soil transmitted helminths, and schistosoma. Okay, so we want to determine if uh, the infection is intense, ba, no? at what level is it light, ba, moderate or heavy and because of that we assess the intensity of infection we can also assess the effectiveness of your treatment your anti-helminthics okay anti-helminthics all right so for the first egg counting procedure is your catocats method or the cellophane covered thick smear this method is derived from your catothick smear okay it's actually the same procedure nine modifications lang a uh, little modifications at the start but the difference main difference for your catocats is that it uses, or it is quantitative. No, you need solving here. No, you solve for the number of eggs or for the egg count. Okay. Now, again, for the procedure, as you can see, uh, your stool should be passed through a wire mesh muna. Okay. If you can remember in your second year para, um, you put the stool on the cover of the container. No, and then you let a wire mesh pass through the stool. And then the stool na mugawas from the wire mesh, that's where you get your sample. Okay. And aside from that, you also use a template, no, with a hole in the middle. And the hole has a diameter of about six millimeters, and you put your stool sample there. Okay. Now the stool na mabilin or the stool that will remain within the hole is equivalent to about forty-three milligrams. Please take note. So the hole, the stool that you put on the hole, and katumabilin na stool sa hole, that's equivalent already to forty-three milligrams of stool. Okay. So it's standardized amount. Okay. So that's why we can use um uh formulas no pwede tayong calculate all right now after uh, putting the stool on the template you can now uh, proceed with a procedure similar to catothick so you put a cellophane on top of it no and then press it until must spread and then let it stand again at room temperature for about an hour or 20 minutes in your para lab manual for the glycerin to act on it okay so same procedure lang the difference is you have again a template and you can you solve no it's quantitative Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, for overclearing, do not overclear because your thin um, eggshells, like hookworm, may uh, dis be destroyed or may disappear. All right. And if your sample contains Schistosoma mansoni, then your clearing can be extended up to 24 hours because your Schistosoma mansoni eggs are quite thick, diba? Right? And it contains a spine, no? So, uh, possible ng clearing madugay, all right? Um, if delete ni mo siya. Uh, if I'm clearing my dugay because of those thick shells. All right. Now, after um, preparing, no, you examine under the microscope. Similar with your pick, you don't need to put your cover slip. All right. Now, again, after examination, you count the number of eggs, okay, found per parasite, and then you multiply by a multiplication factor of 24. And your answer will have a... Um, unit of eggs per gram of feces. So later, I'll show you the real formula, okay? Para makabalo mo nga 24 ang multiplication factor or parang shortcut, okay? As mentioned, again, it is used for assessing intensity of infection, which is to soma and your soil transmitted helminths. Consistency of the stool is the main determinant of your um, test, okay? Because this uh, test is well done or is performed best when your stools are formed. Okay, because formed stools will ha yield higher egg counts. Okay, all right. And this technique can also be done on fresh formed stools and not on liquid samples. Diba? Because, of course, if you use liquid samples, it could be na um, pagbutang ni mo sa cellophane, no? When you put the cellophane, it may leak at the sides, diba? So it cannot capture it. You cannot examine everything, all right? So it's best to use it on formed stools, fresh formed stools. Okay, all right. Ayan. Now, here is again how you pr you uh, prepare your catocats procedure as you can see if you can remember diba again your stool sample put it on a container and then let a wire mesh pass through it and then the uh, stool that will pass through no you will get a sample from there okay now from the sample kato sa sample you put it on the template ayan this one with a hole okay so basically imo sudla ng hole hala yes okay and then after ma even a surface no after um even na siya all right, remove the template and the remaining stool. This one is equivalent to about 43 milligrams. Okay, 43, 43 milligrams. Okay, then after, same procedure now with catothick, you place um, a cellophane over it, green cellophane or cellophane immersed in glycerine malachite green solution.
press, di ba, using a rubber stopper until mo spread siya. And uh, this is the final product. Leave it at room temperature again for quite some time to let the glycerin act on it. Okay? So that's your uh, procedure. Now, after again leaving it at room temperature, examine under the microscope. Do, do not use or do not put a cover slip anymore. And then ca count the number of eggs per helminth that you see. So per Ascaris, per Trichuris, per Schistosoma. Okay? All right. Now, here's your formula. Ayan. So... The formula, this is the long way, not the long method. So number of eggs counted divided by 43 milligrams, diba? that's the number of stool that you used, times 1,000 milligrams per grams to convert the milligrams to grams, okay? So asa sila nakakuha sa 24, ilang divide ang 1,000 by 43. If, if yun divide na, it's equivalent to about 23.2222. So ilang round up to 24. So if you use the 24, okay ra po, pero medyo higher imuhang answer compared Sa long method, okay? So, if you use the shortcut, so number of eggs of parasite counted, multiply na dayon siya with 24, okay? Alright, but if you want to perform this, okay ra put. So, either way, kung asa ka mas convenient or asa ka mas comfortable, okay? Mas ang imong answer, ang imong unit is eggs per gram, EPG uh, of feces, okay? Alright, eggs per gram of feces. Alright, okay, so that's for your cattle cats, no? It's also... Among the egg counting procedures, this is the one that is uh, most commonly or routinely performed, okay? All right, so that's for, for the first method, the cattle cats. Next, you have your uh, stall dilution egg count. So it's still an egg counting procedure, but the difference lang is you use a diluent in the form of 0.1 normal NaOH, sodium hydroxide. So the purpose of the NaOH is, in a way, parang clearing agent pa rin because it saponifies fat, no? it dissolves fat, and also frees the eggs from your debris. Okay, so uh, your stool is diluted this time, no, and you measure using uh, stall pipettes. Okay, so the same, the total egg count you multiply by a factor. This time, your factor is 100. Okay, uh, routine amount of stool needed is about four grams of feces. All right, sensitivity is determined pa rin by consistency. So, similar with your cattle cat, it's best performed if form stool samples. Okay, all right. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the last two bullets, I think wala na ako na nabutang sa inyo handouts. So, take note lang. For Trichuris, if you get no an EPG of about 30,000 eggs per gram, it indicates the presence of a several hundred of worms that could produce definite symptoms. Okay? And for hookworm, 2, 5 to 5,000 eggs per gram usually indicates a clinically significant infection. So as you can see, that's the purpose of your egg counts. It establishes, no, or it gives you an idea. Uh, uh, it gives you an idea on to the intensity of the infection. Okay, or is it clinically significant, bang infection? Okay, all right, again. So that's for the second method, the stall dilution egg count. So here is the procedure. As you can see, so you use an Erlenmeyer flask, no, and then uh, four grams of stool and NaOH. You shake and then put a cover slip at the top. Okay, all right, and then uh, you get a sample of 0.15 uh, cc, no, or 0.15 ml. Put in a slide cover slip, no, and then examine under the microscope. And again, to get EPG eggs per gram, you multiply the egg count, imohang initial egg count, by 100. Okay, all right, ayan. So that's your um. Stall, uh, stall egg count or stall dilution egg count. Not routinely perform in your hospitals, no, um, but it's still an egg count procedure. Okay, all right. Now the last two methods of egg counting procedures. The first one is the direct smear method of beaver. This is what we perform in our laboratory classes, no. So if you can remember, diba after making your direct fecal smear, no, you use your counter, handheld counter, and then you count na so good kung pila ka ascaris, no, pila ka trichuris, and then report, no, report by uh, number of eggs seen of the parasite per cover slip or per smear. So 56 eggs of Ascaris per smear, the nana. So that's our way, you know, direct smear method of beaver. Okay. And the last method is the MacMaster's egg counting chamber. So you use a counting chamber, no, similar to the principle of hemocytometer. Okay. So you use about 20 milligrams of stool, you subject that to salt flotation method, no. And um, the sample you then charge on the egg counting chamber. Okay. But of course, this egg counting chamber has its own rules, no, uh, different from your hemocytometer. Okay. So here's an example, no. This is your egg, uh, MacMaster's egg counting chamber. As you can see, diba, lahi ang yahang mga grids, okay. Lahi pod ang yahang um, counting. Uh, rules, no? What eggs or on say mga dapat i count kung mulapas bali na linya or whatever. Okay, so that's your MacMaster's egg counting chamber. All right. Okay, now these methods again um, are your egg counting procedures. Now, after calculating, you then interpret the result based on this table onto the uh, onto what 
um, intensity ang infection the patient is having. No, It could be light ba, moderate, or heavy, depending on the organisms that you have seen. Again, we're focusing on soil-transmitted helminths, the Ascaris, hookworm, and Trichuris, and Schistosoma. Okay, so how do I remember that? Medjoli so memorize ang numbers, no? But always take note lang na the higher end sa range, sa kada intensity mo, end og 9. And then ang next ni na intensity mo start og plus 1 sa higher end. So example, 1 to 99 ang light. Ang next is 100 mag start. Then 100 to 399, and then 400. Divine Anna. So as you can see, sa Schistosoma, 400 pa lang na egg count, no? It's already called, it's already heavy intensity. So ana pa lang nakagamay na egg EPG, no? Heavy intensity na na for Schistosoma. Whereas for Ascaris, no? 50,000. <laughs> Kailangan pag 50,000 para uh, maka, maka uh, interpret ka na heavy ang intensity sa infection. Okay? Alright. So that's for your egg counting procedures. Again, the main purpose is for assessing intensity of infection and also, in a way, assessing your treatment effective effectiveness. Okay? Alright. So those are your egg counting procedures. Okay. All right, now we go now to the next uh, stool examination technique, and that is your staining methods. If I recall, um, remember, uh, gahapon I mentioned, no? Your um, ONP examination, OVA and parasite examination, is composed of three parts. Diba? The first is the preparation of your direct wet smear, direct fecal smear, followed by your concentration techniques, and lastly, the preparation of your permanent stain smears, diba? And as I've emphasized and mentioned, your permanent stain smears is our way or the means to confirm intestinal protozoan infections, okay? Because it's through here that we can really see no, your protozoa because we apply color to them. So mas makita ang nuclear structures, makita nilang morphology, okay? And that's what we use in identifying them, okay? All right. So again, permanent stain smears, the most reliable method, no? There are two commonly used methods. First is the Wheatley's modification of the Gomori tissue trichrome stain, or in short, Wheatley's trichrome stain. And the second one is the Ior hematoxylin. Okay. Now, in measuring or in examination, you examine at least 300 or more oil immersion fields. So, imo jung hutlun ang smear. Okay. All right. Ayan. Para higher chances, higher likelihood of recovering the parasite, okay? As mentioned again, permanent stain smear, the most important procedure to confirm the diagnosis of intestinal protozoan infections, okay? But again, in the Philippines, no, um, contento na tano. we're okay with the direct fecal smear, okay? All right, ayan. So, but uh, theoretically, um, ideally, you should confirm your intestinal protozoan infections from your permanent stain smears. Okay. All right. Now, here, nigawa sa yung pretest, di ba? Uh, recommended stain for intestinal coccid, yeah? You have modified acid fast. Pero recommended uh, procedure or stain for your intestinal microsporidia, your answer should be modified trichrome. Okay? Do not be confused with the weekly trichrome from the modified trichrome. These are two different procedures, two different staining uh, techniques. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, these are your, again, initial information about your permanent stain smears. Again, intestinal microsporidia, atong stain na gamiton is modified trichrome. So, natin sa yung pretest. Intestinal coccidia is, of course, your modified acid fast. Okay. All right. So, we'll start first with your weekly trichrome, no? Uh, the first uh, common method. Uh, weekly trichrome, again, a fixative that is recommended is PVA for your sample, diba? As mentioned, then PVA uh, really gives uh, the best results in staining. Okay? PVA. And expected results, as you can see, ang shades ni, ang shades sa yung color no uh, background debris kay about green okay ang protozoa will be blue green to purple ang cytoplasm and then ang nuclear material is dark red uh, purple red or red and they are sharply delineated meaning claro gyud siya no from the background okay so uh, various shades na of, of 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 colors from green to blue to red so inana ang yang color so here's an example of your um uh, protozoa stain using your trichrome stain. So the first one is Entamoeba solitica. As you can see, the background again is green. No, the cytoplasm is uh, blue green. All right, and the nuclear material uh, is spreading uh, dark blue, and then pwede po siyang, uh, red purple or purple. Okay, and here's a jar just so you can see the trophozoites again. It's well stained. Background is green. Your cytoplasm blue green, and the nuclear material, di ba? Kani yung mga eyes, yung eyes. Okay, all right, kay uh, purple red. Okay, so many shy trichrome stain. Okay, all right. Now, the next method is your uh, iron hematoxylin. So, for the iron hematoxylin stain, this was considered to be the oldest method, no? 
big uh, oldest method it was started a century ago so dugay dugay na all right okay but this uh, stain it reveals excellent morphology of the protozoa okay and aside from that the nuclear material or the nuclear uh, structures are sharper and clearer compared to your trichrome so it's this is best no to uh, to use all right it uses two modifications or two methods you have the spencer monroe method and the tompkins miller method the tompkins miller method is the longer method and it uses a decolorizer okay in the form of two percent phosphotungstic acid two percent phosphotungstic acid so a uh, longer method it contains a lot of reagents and steps okay all right now expected results as you can see on color is in the shades of blue and purple pa rin. so cytoplasm blue to purple protozoa nuclear dark blue to dark purple and the background is light blue na sometimes pinkish na siya pink na tint okay all right uh, yeah so here's an example of your entamoeba pa rin histolytica stained using iron hematoxylin so as you can see the background is blue or dark blue to purple nuclear material dark blue to purple pa rin, diba? so um yes so many shy muhang iron hematoxylin stain no so easy to remember lang ang mga color sky in the shades of uh, dark blue purple okay all right Ay, sige. so the last staining method I will pade, sorry the next is your modified trichrome Ay, sorry again modified trichrome staining method is for your intestinal microsporidia so you have two methods you have the ryan blue and weber green so as you can see nalang nalay differences gamay okay so for weber green as you can see the fixative that is uh, recommended is five to ten percent formalin or your staff whereas your ryan blue you can use fresh stool okay all right again now for the expected results for the microsporidia itself no for the spores and its polar tube they are the same bright pinkish red so asa as la mo differ sa colors sa background so kung weber green mo gigamit ang background is green no ang bacteria and debris green or maybe red and for ryan blue of course nasa pangalan na blue okay blue ang bacteria or debris and even ang um, uh, may also be color red okay pero ang main difference lang talaga kay sa background but the spores itself the microsporidia themselves they uh, appear the same uh, they appear the same color no in both procedures they appear bright pinkish red okay now in addition also for ryan blue it's recommended that you use or it's best to use uh diarrhea diarrheic or liquid na mga stools because the more diarrheic the stools no the more spores are present your intestinal microsporidia kasi no they also present the same symptoms with their coccidia with and with your amoeba no na diarrheic no mag diarrhea ang patient no liquid ang stools okay so the the more diarrheic the more liquid the stools the higher the spores are that can be recovered okay all right again so those are your modified trichrome stain weber green ryan blue main difference lang sa duha expected results ang background okay kung weber green green ang background okay and kung ryan blue blue ang background okay all right so here's an example this is your ryan blue diba so as you can see the red one these are your microsporidia and then diba this is the polar tube as you can see diagonal line at the center okay so blue ang background and of course weber green green ang background as you can see the microsporidia they are in the same shades no same color purple red or uh, purple najud or red okay all right or bright pinkish red there is a left okay all right again so that's for your modified trichrome again recommended for intestinal microsporidia okay and the last staining method for stools you have modified acid fast again this is for coccidians again so acid fast no i'm sure uh you're you Delete any new term for you, dear, no, because you've already encountered this in your bakte. Okay, sigi. So acid fast, sigi. So review lang ta. When you when you say an organism is acid fast, unsa day tong naas na unsa na component day tong nasa yung cell wall that makes it acid fast. Unsa man tusha? What? Unsa tusha na? Unsa tusha na component? Your mycolic acid. Okay, very good. Mycolic acid, sigi. So asa man tuna black, sigi. G G tanan. H E O G E G H Tama. Okay. Okay. All right. So mycolic acids. Very good. That's good that you remember. So your mycolic acids are also known as your long chain fatty acids or hydroxymethoxy acids. Please take note of that. Hydroxymethoxy acids. 
long chain fatty acids, mycolic acids, no? So these are found in the cell wall of your acid fast organisms. Now, not all acid fast organisms have the same number or concentration of mycolic acids. Now, they don't have differ because those that have really higher concentration of your mycolic acids, those are what we call your true acid fast, okay? Your true acid fast, um, and that is, of course, your mycobacterium uh, species, mycobacterium tuberculosis, so lagi ng true acid fast. Whereas those that have only little or medyo konti lang, no? those are what we call your partially acid fast organisms, okay? And your coccidians no? are examples of your partially acid fast organisms, okay? So since we're talking about partially acid fast organisms, your coccidians are your partially acid fast parasites. Now, for partially acid fast bacteria, kinsaman to, can you give an example? No card, yes, sir. Okay, very good. No card, yeah. Yes, Dre. So can you kind of block Dre? F, sir. Oh, F, okay, very good. Very good. No card, yes, one. Yes, napailain. I remember pa? Chukamorella, sir. Ansa? Chukamorella. Oh, very good. Gordonias. Chuk okay, Chuk Gordonia. That's okay. correct. Gordonia, Chukamorella. <laughs> okay. Ang saman to na black. Ang saman to na black. E, sir. E. E. And then, katong yes, Chukamorella. Ang saman to. F, F, okay. Very good. Very good. Napailain. Last one. Okay, very good. Rhodococcus. On sa to na black? F, okay, very good. That is correct. Very good, dear. No? Your NG, RT, atong mnemonics. Again, for partially acid fast bacteria. No cardia, Gordonia, Rhodococcus, and Chuka Morella. Please take note. Do not forget about that. Okay, all right. Ayan. So, um, aside from that, no question. Uh, Corine bacterium ba? Ang Corine bacterium na ba siya may colic acids? Yes or no? Corine bacterium species. Yes or no? Dapat siya may colic acid. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Mo agree bang uban? <laughs> yes. So dapat answer niyo tanan ni siya. Okay, para mahatagan mo tanan ng points. Is this the answer of the section or delay? Yes or no? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. So the your answer is yes. correct. Okay, very good. Yes, no, Corine bacterium has uh, mycolic acid. So please take note of that, dears. Nigawas na siya sa ako ang board exam, no? Ang question was, which of the following organisms do uh, cannot be stained with your acid fast, no? Bacteria. Ang choices kay A, Streptomyces, B, Corine bacterium, C, Nocardia, and D, kay Rhodococcus yata. So of course, ang ato answer dito is letter A, Streptomyces. Streptomyces is not partially acid fast. They do not contain... Uh, mycolic acids no, in its cell wall. But Corine bacterium, I've read it's a bailey, contains mycolic acids in their cell wall. Okay, all right. So going back no, for coccidians, again, the recommended staining is your Kinyun's method. So di ba, recall acid fast staining procedures, you have two types. You have Kinyun and on sa tong usap? Zeal Nielsen. Zeal Nielsen. Okay, very good. Zeal Nielsen. And among that, katong mga two, kinsama mga other names niya? Kinsama tong hot, kinsama tong cold method? Zeal Nielsen Zeal ang hot. hot. Okay. And si Kinyun ang cold. Very good. Cold. Okay. So why is Zeal Nielsen called hot method, man? Gamit og heat acid sa <laughs> Heat acid? <laughs> heat, heat more than <laughs> <of> flame, <laughs> sir. Okay. It, it uses heat. Chak to to na reason. It uses heat. Pero on purpose sa heat, the ice staining. To enhance the staining, sir. Enhance the staining. That's correct. All right. Unsay tawag na to sa term ato na yun, Anna. Unsay, unsay tawag sa reagent na yun, Anna, ang purpose. Your? Mordant. Sorry. Mordant. Very good. That is correct. Okay. That is why Zeal Nielsen is called the hot method. It's because it uses heat as your mordant. Please take note of that. Okay. Wag nang mag -isep. Do not be confused. Okay. All right. So if ang acid fast ang yung mordant kay Azil Nielsen kay heat, so gram staining, on sa may mordant? Hala. <laughs> on sa mga <ito> mordant? <laughs> sa to ang ano, gram staining. Hello. Methanol? Grams iodine, sir. Grams Very good. Ayan. Grams iodine. Okay. Kisama ito na black. Ni-answer iodine. F, sir. F, tanan? 
Okay, all right, sige. Very good. That's correct, ha? Don't forget, gram staining na to, mordant is iodine. But for zeal nilsen, ang ato mordant is heat. The purpose of mordant is, again, to enhance staining, no? Enhance the relationship of the stain, to, of the primary stain to your organism nag stain. Okay? Please take note of that. It strengthens the relationship. Pakganon sana all my mordant. Charot. Okay, all right. Now, again, um, mordant, no? So, sa heat, for Zeal Nielsen, that's why it's called hot method. And cold method for kin use because it uses tergitol. Okay, it's a wetting agent. Okay. Uh, more kailangan ko aning tergitol para at least ma wet ko. Charatuk. Okay, so tergitol, wetting agent, siya ang more than cold methods in mohang kin use. Okay, all right. Now, uh, this is modified by the name itself, of course. It's It follows the same procedure of acid fast staining, but the difference lang, of course, modified is here. Weaker decolorizer is used. So, negosin siya yung pretest, di ba? What is the difference between the modified acid fast and the original acid fast method? The modified acid fast uses a weaker decolorizer, weaker concentration of your um, acid, no? Because in the normal acid fast staining, it uses a higher concentration. Okay, now, if you use the normal na staining procedure, diba, recall that your partially acid fast organisms contain only little number of mycolic acids. If strong rapot kayang decolorizing agent, pwede noong <laughs> mawala ta ng mga mycolic acids or dili na ma, ma capture o maayo sa imuhang mycolic acids tung primary stain. So hence, dili sila mu color, no? Dili sila, dili la ma retain ang primary stain. So it could lead to false negative results, diba? So uh, that's why we use a weaker concentration of acid okay uh, but regardless of the procedure no your results are still color pink to red ang imuhang coccidians and the background is blue or green green okay so you know acid fast is a differential staining press with your gram stain so it uses two stains no yun sa matong primary stain for acid fast man Carbofuxin. Carbofuxin, sir. Carbofuxin. Okay? Carbofuxin. Yes. <laughs> Carbofuxin. Please, uh, uh, di naman ko ay nanog pronunciation, pero, yeah, Carbofuxin. Okay? All right. Very good. Carbofuxin. And then, your secondary stain is? Yung saman? Methylene blue, sir. Methylene blue or malachite green. Very, very good. I love it. Ang galing ng mga bakte teachers nyo, ha? I love it talaga. That is good. Okay? You have malachite green or methylene blue. Okay. So, uh, sure mo na secondary stain ang methylene malachite green. Dili ba safranin? Charot. Dili ba safranin ang sa acid fast na counter stain? Dili sa sa Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Very good. Ayan. That's that's good. Dapat bahala yun sa mo pa confuse sa question. Dapat panindigan yun yung answer. Ha? Okay. That's good. Very good. Okay. All right. Ayan. That's correct. Primary stain for your acid fast. Carbol. Nail ha? Dili na siya carbo. So, carbol. Nail, carbofuxin, and your secondary stain could be methylene blue or malachite green. So if you use methylene blue, background will be blue, and if malachite green, green ang background. And the other non-acid fast organisms, it take up nila ang secondary or counter stain. Okay, all right, ayan. So that's for your modified acid fast. Again, for coccidians, ang difference lang sa original acid fast is weaker decolorizer. Weaker decolorizer for your modified acid fast test or procedure. Okay, all right. So again, here are your coccidians, no? your cryptosporidium, cyclospora, and cystoisospora. So as you can see, the colors of them, di ko siya inanaka, bright na red compared to your mycobacterium, which uh, which is your true acid fast. So sila kay medyo light lang na shade, no? could be pinkish, um, purple, no? or medyo dili kay inanaka bright na red. Okay? But they still exhibit acid fast. Ness. Acid fastness, okay? Only partially. Partially acid fast record sila. Okay? All right. And the background, again, color blue. All right. Okay. Ayan. So, uh, yes. And also, um, if you use your trichrome stain, no? Depende sa lab pod, you can quantitate your results. Okay? So, here's an example of a quantitation table. Uh, so, if you see about uh, two, no? Less than equal to two parasite cells or yeasts and artifacts per... 10 OIF, then you see, you re report it as few. So example, kada field na kay makita na at least one parasite or uh, one parasite kada field until mabot kag 10. And until 10, more jury nakita ni mo. So that's equivalent to about a uh, few. Okay, few. Now for moderate, 3 to 9. Okay, and many greater than equal to 10. Okay, so per field in about 10 uh oil immersion fields, okay? All right, so this is an example lang ha, but other laboratories have their own way of reporting put and quantitation if they want to quantitate their results, okay? All right, ayan. Again, this is under oil immersion, yeah, OIF, okay, all right.
Okay, and we go now to the last method in your stool examination technique, and that is your the recovery of your tapeworms collex. But this procedure is not uh it's no longer routinely performed and it's rarely requested because usually uh this test is uh, requested to detect or to test if the patient's treatment to a tapeworm infection is successful. And majority of your treatment to therapy to tapeworm right now is effective na. So wala na kay siya na request, all right? But if it's still requested, what we're looking is again your scolex because the scolex, no, the recovery of the tapeworm scolex in a patient sample undergoing treatment for a tapeworm infection indicates success in treatment. Okay, because it means that your scolex was removed, no, na tang tang siya uh, sa intestinal mucosa. Because again, recall if you're if you can remember, the head of the tapeworm, your scolex, uh, dito magsugod, no. Th this is where your uh, the other parts of the tapeworm will uh, will come, no? Diri sila magikan, okay? So from the head, the, the neck, and then the, my neck, my back, you have the head, and then the neck, and then the proglottids, the individuals, individual segments of your uh, tapeworm. Now, if the patient is undergoing treatment and wala nakitaan ang scolex sample, then it could mean that the scolex is still attached, no? On the intestinal mucosa. Hence, the tapeworm can still proliferate and the tapeworm can still cause infection. Okay, so nigawas sa boards, question, the appearance of this part of the tapeworm indicates success in treatment. Your answer should be scolex. The non-appearance, na po another question, the non-appearance of this tapeworm uh, structure indicates unsuccessful treatment, your answer is still scolex. So, gibalik tadra, no? <laughs> so, in Bisaya pa lang, ang first question kay, if makita ni siya sa sample, it means successful ang treatment, scolex. If dili makitan ang sample, if dili ni makitan sa sample, meaning dili successful ang treatment, your answer is still scolex. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, ganun. Okay. Alright. So, that's for the last uh, procedure, the recovery of the tapeworm, scolex. Okay. Alright. Now, in summary, this is the ideal, no? Uh, the uh, procedural flow chart uh, when you receive stool samples in the laboratory for parasite examination. Now, when you receive stool, again, a fresh stool, as mentioned, uh, the first procedure you perform is, of course, the fresh, uh, uh, the fresh, the direct wet mount or your direct fecal smear. Now, again, uh, the direct fecal smear gives you the advantage of seeing, visualizing live motile trochozoids. Okay. Now, if it's positive or negative, either uh, positive or negative, you subject Japon to concentration techniques because examples are negative. It could be that um, negative siya sa imuhang uh, direct fecal smear kay gamay pa ang number of parasites na nasa yang sample. So you can see that in your concentration techniques, di ba? Kay para mas makoncentrate pag yun. So for concentration techniques, either positive or negative, you still submit, uh, sub subject it to permanent stain smears. Because again, it could be na, you cannot see any more protozoan cysts, trophozoites, di ba, in concentration techniques. So, mawala siya sa concentration techniques. Now, what if the patient is suffering from um, a protozoan infection? So, you need to perform the permanent stain smear, di ba, to confirm the diagnosis of intestinal protozoan infections. Now, on the other hand, if you receive preserved stool samples, which again is more common in the other countries, no? Again, then the first procedure na is your concentration techniques. You do not need to perform the direct wet mount because again, your sample is preserved. You cannot see any more motel trophozoids. Wala na okay? All right, ayan. Now, concentration techniques, again, either positive, negative, subject to permanent stain smears, okay? So as you can see, ang permanent stain smears talaga, dears, ang pinaka-important. Siya yun ang makadiagnose ay muhang intestinal protozoan infections. Okay? Alright. And usually for concentration techniques, dili ta maka-confirm maka og diagnosis sa mga helminth na to. Helminth eggs and helminth larvae. But in the Philippines, kato sa lang tanan, ma-confirm na siya sa direct wet mouth. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, again, this is ideal. Okay? Theoretical. But again, as I've mentioned, not all that you have learned in theory will be applied in practice. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Sige. So, muna siya ang summary sa mga procedures. Alright? So, th those are all um, your stool uh, examination techniques and all about the stool sample. Okay, before we proceed to the next sample, dears, do you have any questions? Any clarifications? <clears throat> Again, what is your recommended stain for intestinal microsporidia? Modified. Uh, <laughs> yes, modified. Modified. Uh, modified as it passes or like Modify trichrome. <laughs> trichrome. Okay. For intestinal, basta microsporidia, trichrome. Ani na lang. For that you can remember. Trichrome, di ba na letter M. So, bagay siya sa napoy letter M. 
microsporidia. Okay? Trichrome, trichrome, microsporidia. Kung modified acid fast, dito siya sa coccidia. Okay? Alright? Para di mo ma-confuse. Again, stain of choice for your intestinal microsporidia. <clears throat> okay, modified. Okay, modified trichrome. And in, uh, stain of choice for your intestinal coccidia, you have? Modified acid fast. Okay, very good. Modified acid fast. Again, what's the difference of the modified acid fast from the original acid fast method? The weaker decolorizer. decolorizer. Okay, perfect. So, asa man ang weaker decolorizer? Ang modified or ang original? Modified. Modified, okay, modified sir. Good. Okay, very good. Okay, that is good. Okay, so we'll continue now with your perianal swab, the next specimen. So, within myself, perianal swab, no? Perianal, so around the anus, okay? So, your anal fold. So, of course, Wag na mag-isep, di ba? We all know na this is used to recover enterobius vermicularis. But aside from enterobius, you can also recover other parasites such as Tania species and Schistosoma mansoni eggs, okay? Because for the longest time then, I think sa review ako nakabaluan nyo na pwede rin ang Tania o Schistosoma mansoni, okay? So, wow, okay. <laughs> Alright, so enterobius, primarily enterobius, but you can also recover other parasites such as Tania and Schistosoma mansoni. Okay. All right. Now, again, we all know that because enterobius, gravid female or burros or female that contains eggs, they migrate out of the anus no, uh, at night to lay their eggs on the folds of the anus. Okay. And whereas your tenia can also crawl out of your anus and pag crawl out niya, mas squeeze ang yang proglotid, no? mas squeeze yang gravid segment, gravid proglotid. And when, once mas squeeze, magawas ang eggs niya. Madeposit niya po sa anal folds. For Shisosoma mansoni, Shisosoma mansoni has a lateral. It has a spine on the sides. Okay, now it could be that during defecation or during uh, bowel movement, pwedeng ma, ma, ma sangit, no? pwedeng ma, mabilin, no? It could uh, stick to your anal folds, ang yahang uh, spine. So pwedeng uh, makitan po siya sa imuhang perianal swab. Okay? All right, Diane. So these are your parasites that can be recovered in your perianal swab. And of course, the, our method here is the cellulose tape or the scotch tape swab method. Scotch tape swab method, dears, for the longest time is considered to be the gold standard. Nako, yung mga gold standard na yan. <laughs> alam na alam na natin dapat yan, mga gusto natin. Again, gold standard test for the diagnosis of your enterobius vermicularis. Okay, please take note of that. Gold standard test for the diagnosis of your enterobius vermicularis infections. Okay, again, um, you'll know, I think you've performed this naman in your public health or para sa second year. So you know how to make one. So again, um, you use scotch tape, no? And then you put it on a glass slide. And then using a tongue depressor, you then let the sticky side of your scotch tape be in contact with the anal folds of the patient, okay? And then after, the sticky side is then um, is returned onto the microscope slide and then examined under the microscope for the characteristic eggs of your enterobius and again the other eggs then na pwedeng makita okay all right ayan now again uh yeah ex examine under the microscope for the parasitic eggs you can also add a drop of toluene or xylol to clear the preparation to remove the artifacts no or mga debris Okay, all right. Now, for specimen collection, there is a specified time, no? It's either early in the morning or late at night. Early in the morning, na wala pa nakaligo, the patient uh, hasn't taken a bath yet or hasn't washed his perineum or perianal region. And you also have here, um, or pwedeng late at night when the patient has already slept for several hours. Okay, all right. So, as long as wala pa na na wash ang iyahang perianal region. Okay. And at least four to six consecutive or sunod-sunod na negative tapes um, are needed to rule out the infection. So if four to six na consecutive negative, you did not see any eggs of enterobius, then the patient is said to be free from enterobius um, infection. Okay. So this is your uh, example of the procedure. Diba? So you all know that. Okay. All right. Again, gold standard test for the diagnosis of enterobius vermicularis. Wag namang isep is your scotch tape swab. Because again, uh, your enterobius eggs is um, less likely to be recovered from your stool. Because no, um, your eggs of enterobius again are only laid at the sides of the anus, okay? And during defecation, of course, um, delete kayo siya ma touch, no? Or delete siya ma, ma include sa sample, okay? And of course, your eggs are airborne, lightweight, so pwede siyang paglihok ni mo, pwede siyang 
ma-disperse. Okay, so hindi siya mapwedeng mabutang sa stool. Less likely siya ma-recover good sa stool. Okay, that's why your gold standard test for the diagnosis and for detection is your scotch tape swab. Okay, all right. Ayan, so that's for your uh, perianal swab or your scotch tape swab. Okay, so very straightforward lang. Okay, the next sample is of course your blood. Okay, now blood is considered to be the next uh, two feces that contains the largest number of parasites. Okay, because again, the gang blood parasites po. The gang parasites that love your blood, or that love your RBCs, no? Uh, or yeah, loves your blood. So therefore, blood is also considered to be the second most commonly submitted sample to the laboratory for parasite examination. So feces ang pinaka-common. Second is, of course, your blood. Okay? All right. Now, blood parasites, again, um, come from a wide range of species, no? both from helminths and protozoa. So helminths, you have your microfilarial worms, mga filarial worms, yung wokiriria, no? brugia, oncocerca. And then you also have, of course, protozoa, mas dagan sa protozoa, plasmodium, for malaria, babesia, leishmania, trypanosoma. Okay, so these are uh, your mga blood parasites. Okay, all right, ayan. Now for blood examination for parasites, uh, of course we need to make blood smears or blood films, no? So yes, kamusta ito mga smearing, uh, <laughs> smearing skills dyan, okay? So continue practicing lang judirst, okay? It needs practice. Okay, now again for blood films for parasitology, they can come from a lot of uh, samples or sources. It could be fresh whole blood, no? It could be anticoagulated, or it could also be sediments uh, coming from concentration procedures. So same concept from uh, same concept with your concentration techniques in feces. Okay. So these are the three major sources. Again, fresh whole blood. You have anticoagulated blood and uh, sediments from concentration. Uh, procedures. Okay, all right. Now, since we perform or we make blood films, of course, we need to stain them, okay, because uh, it's no use to view them under the microscope if... Yes, what's happening? Gian, yes, okay. Baka nakatulog na si Gian, but anyway, all right. Okay, sige, sige. Now, again, continuing no, for your stain. Again, there's no use if we don't stain your smears. We can't see that under the microscope or, or it won't be clear, no? So the stain of choice na to, um, for the longest time is gemsa. Okay, gemsa gyur. But um, recent years, the ganang stains na develop, okay? And pwedeng magamit. One of that is your right stain. Right stain that we use for staining your peripheral blood smears, no? In hematology. And also mga other rapid staining options, okay? Okay, all right. Now, the difference lang is for right stain, dears, no, the fixative is already included in your stain, okay? So, you don't need a separate procedure for fixation, okay? Unlike sa GEMSA, the fixative is different from the staining solution. So, you need to first immerse the slides um, in a fixative solution and then after, immerse na in your stain. That's for GEMSA. But for rights, your fixative is already found in the rights solution or right staining solution. So, pwede nang one, one dipping na lang or one immersion na lang in the right uh, stain. Okay? All right. Ayan. But again, specimen, uh, specimen stain of choice pa rin is your GEMSA. Okay. All right. Now, we can also use another stain if we want to see the microfilarial sheath no, sa itong mga worms. Uh, again, we can use Delafield's hematoxylin. Please take note. Again, this is the stain of choice for your uh, demonstration of microfilarial sheath, your Delafield's hematoxylin. Okay, all right. Ayan. Um, and again, as always, as always, a request for examination of your blood films is always a stat request ayan sige so question so again recall ni siya no stat no stat okay stat means uh, answer the answer answer lag letter no letter a immediately b as soon as possible c um after 30 minutes and d none of the above so unsa may answer sa section para na may points na nan immediately a. immediately a. 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 all right final answer ni sa section or delay yes sir Okay. Basta na ganag letter B dyan. Immediately, uh, sir. Immediately. immediately. Okay. So, final answer? Okay. All right. Yes, final sir. answer? Okay. Yes, All right. So, your, your answer is very correct. Okay. So, that's correct. No? Um, stat means, again, it means um, immediately. Okay. It's not as soon as possible. It means immediately. Okay. So, what do you mean by immediately? Drop everything now, ganern. So whatever you're doing now, <laughs> kung naman kadawat kag stat na test or stat request, you drop everything now and you meet it in the pouring rain. Pina Taylor Swift, charot. Again, drop everything now. Of course, imo nang prioritize ang 
stat request no so sana na stat request na lang ako para ako ay ma-prioritize charot okay <laughs> all right so again stat request imo jay prioritize siya okay so siya gyud ang imuhang i perform una no so if unsa man imo gi perform karon imo jud na biyaan and then imo na siyang i uh, I prioritize jud tong stat request. Not necessarily na biyaan yun na nakatiwangwang lang no. You could endorse it to the medtech na imong kauban or unsa man yung procedure sa lab. Okay? All right. So, example for blood films of course because uh, what we're after here is malaria. Your malaria is of course deadly, no? So if magpadugay-dugay ta no, the patient could be um, at risk of death if dili nato sa i examine dayon. Okay? So once you receive a stat request, usually ang result ana is also released immediately as soon as possible or uh, mga ang turnaround time dapat ana is mga 1 hour siguro depending on the lab basta dapat um pass pass good because it's a stat request. Okay? All right. Ayan. So um uh, yeah, stat request. Drop everything now, no? Immediately, you prioritize that. So, usually, ako na experience sa stat request is mga blood collection, no? So, um, what if tanan mag... <laughs> what if daghan na kang stat requests na madawat? So, of course, yung prioritize tanan. So, um, usually, mag-goon, ma-assign naman mag ka section sa internship. And even if you work as a med tech, no? Pwede ka ma-assign mag ka section lang. Ma-assign ka hema for the whole month or for the whole week. Ma-assign ka clean chem, ma-assign ka o phlebotomy. So, of course, dili siya mag-mix ang imuang stat request na like, na kay stat for blood collection, na po kay stat for CBC. So, ako na nimo tunga ako na nimo yung lawas. No? So, um, usually, kung ma-assign ka sa section, ang stat requests ana are really specific for the section. So, example, stat CBC, no? stat um, APTT, stat PT, APTT, ganun. Or sa clean chem, stat um, CKMB, stat drop eye, no? stat electro electrolytes, ganun. So, it's really specific for the section. So, sa para or sa clean mic, pwedeng stat um, thick and thin films or uh, stat blood films for malaria. Okay, ganun. So, uh, prioritize your stat requests. Okay? So, ayan. So, for blood collection, yes, very common. Stat blood collection. Ay, diba? Stat blood culture. Yes. So, ayan. So, I know that's a joke lang naman. I feel like ang pasabot sa doctors, Anna, if mo request lang stat blood culture, is the collection. Stat collection for blood culture. Of course, kay sa culture itself, di natin siya mahimong stat, no? Alam nga na mag atong ipugso ng bacteria. Dapat mutubo na karong 30 minutes, ganun, diba? So, di man kakabuot sa bacteria. Incubate magig 18 to 24 hours, di ba? So, ang collect, ang pasabot sa stat blood culture, I believe, is the collection, ang pag-collect sa sample for blood culture. Okay? Alright, so daghang stat requests, daghang stat tests, no, in the lab, depending on, again, the need and depending po sa doctor kung sa yahang ganang ipastat. Okay? Alright, but more, most often than not, when the test sample or when a test request is stat, it means the patient is faced in a life-threatening situation or life or death situation sila. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, prioritize. Prioritize talaga. So, prioritize your stat requests. Okay. All right. Now, we go now to your blood examination techniques, starting first with... Ay, sorry. Maglibog juga niyo. Anyway, <laughs> blood examination techniques, uh, looking at the different uh, staining results lang, no? With your different blood stains. So, starting first with GEMSA. So, for GEMSA, as you can see, ang GEMSA, the RBCs are quite pale colored, no? But the inclusions are quite clear din naman. So, medyo clear lang siya. The second is your right stain, which we usually use in HEMA. So, RBCs are bright red, no? Or orange, ilang color. And of course, we have here Delafield's hematoxylin. So, your Delafield's hematoxylin, hematoxylin, again, is used for microfilarial sheath. So, the one that's pointed by the arrow, that's your microfilarial sheath. So, ang sheath is, again, a covering of the tail of your worm, sa microfilarial the microfilarial worm. No, ang tail niya na covering, okay? And that is called your sheath. Now, we use that, mango, the presence or absence of a sheath, we use that for um, the identification of the species of the microfilarial worm. No, later when we go to discussion of your filarial worms, okay? All right, ayan. Sige. Now, we go now to the first uh, type of uh, techniques, no? Blood examination. Techniques come from your finger prick blood sample. So from skin puncture, yes, ang favorite ng lahat, charot. Okay, so again, your finger prick blood sample must be free flowing, okay? It must be free flowing and it you should not milk, okay? Dini mo siya siging ipress ang finger kung asa ka nag-collect og sample. Why? Because it could introduce a lot of tissue fluid, okay? A lot of tissue fluid that could dilute the number of parasites present. So hence, mo decrease ang number of parasites, mas lesser ang pwede nimong ma-recover. Okay? But of course, in reality, there are a lot of times na dili kayo kusog mo flow ang dugo sa patient after skin puncture. So tendency is mag-press or mag-milk. So try your best lang to avoid 
pressing your the finger um na daghan ikadaghan okay so ano lang uh, do not milk it like press it from time to time lang pero ayaw si giha okay para at least ma-minimize ang tissue fluid na pwedeng ma-introduce okay all right ayan so first method is of course the wet or fresh preparation so basically one drop of your blood from your finger prick blood sample no and then um, put in a slide and then examine under the microscope diyon so what you can see are motile no motile trypomastic goats and microfilarii na mga worms okay so they're really moving okay but the difference lang or the disadvantage is you cannot identify them uh, up to the species level because again you don't see their nuclear structures or morphology ma that we use for um diagnosis or for identification okay the advantage lang is you can see its motility you can see that it's live and you can really see the the you can really say na there is a presence no there is um, a parasite a blood parasite that is in the patient okay all right muna yahang advantage lang but again species identification is not possible so here's an example um your microfilaria di ba so you can see worm rasha so you don't see the sheath no you don't see the nuclei whatever those that we use for identification so you just see a plain worm no <laughs> plain worm lang yun all right okay and you have trypomastic goats di ba again you cannot see its uh uh, so you cannot identify the species, okay? Basta wet or fresh preparation, okay? All right, ayan. Next, we go now to the um, <clears throat> the first type of your films. Diba? As mentioned, for blood parasite examination, we use uh, or we make blood films, okay? And true enough, diba? what is your gold standard test for the diagnosis of malaria? Thick and thin films. Thick and thin films. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. So, okay, thick and thin film. So, ito na block na to. Again, you have H and okay, F. All right. Very good. So, again, the thick and thin films for the longest time, even until now, is still considered to be the gold standard test for the diagnosis of malaria. Okay? All right. So, we'll talk first about the first type, your thick films. Now, for thick films, by the name itself, thick, bagasha, because you use a larger amount of blood and since you use larger quantity of blood you can detect all the parasites that may be found in your blood especially in cases of low parasitemia meaning low concentration of parasites palang in the blood because again higher chances of recovery since daghan mang dugo imong gigamit or more larger amount of blood ang imo ang imong gigamit okay all right and your thick films is also more sensitive and can detect about 20 parasites per ul of blood because again for the reason that you use a larger amount of blood and since it's more sensitive hence it is uh generally used as a screening method screening method or screening test no used for screening purposes because you want to detect first if the patient really has no this type of parasite or this infection so you use a screening it's used for screening purposes, okay? All right, so aside from the plasmodium species and trypanosomes also, you can detect the microfilarii, microfilarial worms using your LPO because these are worms, no, nematodes, microfilarial worms, they can't be seen even at LPO. But for your trypanosomes and your malaria, plasmodium species, which are quite small, they can be seen using oil immersion. And again, examine ka at least 300 fields before you report a result, <clears throat> okay? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, now for the preparation or for the making of your thick films, again, diba, from finger prick blood sample, you, you put about two to three drops no, of blood at the center of the slide. And then using another slide, okay, at the edge of another slide, you stir the drops of blood together circular motion until maka-achieve ka og diameter na about 2 cm or comparable to the size of a 25 centavo coin, okay? So, if naka-form na ka atong 25 centavo coin na appearance, okay, then that's okay, that's already acceptable. Again, um, since fresh whole blood man from capillary blood, you must continue stirring for about 30 seconds to prevent the formation of fibrin strands because these fibrin strands, if muklat na, they could trap the parasites um, within those fibrin strands. So you cannot examine anymore. Okay. Now, another um, specification for your thick films, you need to dehemoglobinize. You need to lyse your RBCs because we don't want the RBCs to be stained. Um, with your gemsa or right stain. Because if you must stain na noon ang RBCs, baga ang imuhang field, wala kayo makita na parasite. Matabunan sila. Okay? And what you're really looking after or what you're looking for are the parasites within the RBCs. So you need to lyse the RBC so that ma-express, no? ma-present or makita ang imuhang parasites inside the RBCs, especially for um, your um, malaria, plasmodium species. Now, how do you dehemoglobinize? What are the methods of dehemoglobinization? You can 
put your slides in the buffer solution of GEMSA, okay, that, that will lead to lysing of RBCs, or you may um, subject the slide, or pwede mo siyang paag paagasan or pagian o tubig, no, a stream of water uh, distilled or tap water slowly until malays ang RBCs or mawala ang pagka-red sa smear, okay? Now, please take note also, your thick films do not require or should not be fixed, okay? Yeah, do not fix someone, charot. It's not your job to fix someone, charot. Okay, di ka rehab center, eme, charot, okay. Anyway, again, so for thick films, again, thick films, uh, fixation is not required, okay? You do not fix your thick films. Why? Because if you want to fix your thick films, your RBCs will now be more difficult. It will be difficult for them to lyse, okay? Or to be dehemoglobinized. So, ang may tabo, of course, di na mo makita ang parasites kay wala naman na, di naman malays ang RBCs, okay? Do not fix your thick films, okay? All right. And WBCs, no, will serve as your um, quality control, no? So, if kani ang color sa WBCs, then it's... Ex if mo siyang color chaktora, then you could say na okay, your stain is working properly. Okay, so your your WBCs ang quality control. And here's an example of reporting from your thick films based on paniker. But again, mo differ siya sa kada um, institution. Okay, and as you can see, sa paniker ang gigamit kay um, HPF. But again, ang recommended is oil immersion field okay oil immersion field all right so again take note ha? thick films larger amount of uh, blood used used for screening purposes um again 2 cm in diameter or the size of a 25 centavo coin 25 centavo coin but in us books you describe siya as uh, the size of a dime d-i-m-e that's a coin in the us no basta 25 centavo coin para philippine setting a fresh whole blood 30 seconds dapat siya stir to avoid uh, fibrin strands it should be late or dehemoglobinized again para mawalang rbc's may express ang inclusions makita ng parasites that are found within the rbc's and lastly it should not be fixed okay it should not be fixed it should not undergo fixation okay and wbc's will serve as your qc quality control okay all right so here is an example of your thick smear diba? if you can remember sin yung para sa second year thick smear and this is um under the microscope na after staining so as you can see ang mabili na lang are your wbc's and the parasites inside your rbc's now again ang apan lang ani dears for your thick smears again it's only for screening but if you want to confirm for the species of the parasite you cannot do it because it's not clear no dili claro kung iyahang mga morphological characteristics so if you want to confirm if you want to determine the parasite species um, you then perform your next films the thin films okay now your thin films is again uh, prepared similar to how you prepare your smears in hematology okay so I'm sure, I hope, I hope, nag-improve na tayo sa mga smearing natin. So, continue practicing lang, okay? So, initial screening, screening, you still do it um, under LPO. Um, microfilarii, again, can be examined under LPO na. And it is usually found or they are found at the edges of your smear. Kay bugat sila, pwede silang dito makoncentrate. Or at the feathered end of the thin film. And similar with your thick films, you examine at least 300 fields, oil immersion pa rin, before you report a negative result. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's for your uh, thin films. Again, as mentioned, this uh, these thin films are used for confirmatory purposes. For parasite identification up to the species level. WBC is still the same. will serve as the quality control. Now, for the preparation of your thin films, same with HEMA, you can use anticoagulated blood. But the difference lang or the ad disadvantage lang is anticoagulated blood, if you do not prepare your smears immediately, the anticoagulant may affect your parasites. It may distort your parasites and even the infected RBCs that um, are found in your sample. And usually that's what we use or infected RBCs, the appearance of the infected RBCs can help us also identify kung unsa na parasite ang nag-affect sa patient, no? especially with their plasmodium species. So we'll uh, discuss that when we go to malaria. Okay. And this time for thin films, again, the slides now are fixed, should be fixed with methanol most of the time methanol because again we want to preserve now the rbcs and we want to preserve then the morphology of the parasites okay all right ayan. again confirmatory purposes parasite identification up to the species level 
Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, here's an example with thin film. Ayan. So, yes. Ganito na ba kaganda ang mga smears niyo? Charot. Okay? Now, for your smears, bitaw dears, no? So, based sa hospitals na ako na experience. Um, sa soto lang na sila yung prescribe na smear. Ang sa soto, ganaan sila na na ay uh, margin sa kilid. Okay? And ganaan sila na straight ni siya. Okay? Dili siya curved. Ganaan sila na block type. Block. Because um, para nila mas dako ang area of examination. But for Galiares, wala ra siya specification for smears. As long as na, as long as makagama ka sa smear na ay feathered end, okay? Okay na sila. Okay na sila. Alright. So, di ba, um, this area, no, where we examine here is, is an example, di ba, under the microscope. So, as you can see, claro good ang mga prior sites, no? So, these are ring forms of plasmodium species. So, as you can see, it's very clear. Uh, it can really help you identify them up to the species level. And aside from that, the RBCs, again, are clear. So you can see what are the effects of the parasite to the infected RBCs. Are the RB RBCs enlarged? Ba? Are the RBCs um, amoeboid in form? Are they um, serrated? Et cetera, et cetera. So that can help you identify then uh, the species of parasite affecting your patient. Okay? All right. So again, what what do you call this area, Gane, sa hima or sa smear na to, where we examine your blood cells in the smear? What do you call this area? Zone of morphology. Okay, the zone of morphology. Very good. Zone of morphology or the critical area of examination. Very good. So, muna, na ako'y chika lang, Ana, no? Parang experience akong internship mismo sa second sem. Okay, alright. So, nag-orals mismo akong CI sa Soto, yes. Blood bank among rotation at na time. And then, um, nabot ni Ana, no? Like, zone of morphology, chika-chika sa orals. So, I don't know ano may nabot sa zone of morphology. Basta nabot mi dito. And then, so, kami ato kayo mag- na shock me. So kaming tulumi to tulumi kabuk ato so by group na orals. So what happened was akong si ay nautana siya na ako. So ano siya na. So what is a zone of morphology di ay? So sa back of my mind kay naratol na ko or lutaw ra jukay ko sa baw na kay ko. <laughs> so sa akong mind akong na think kay sa back te man siya no. So <laughs> akong gi blurt out pero akong gitubag sa akong si ay kay. Um, di ba sa back tema na sir? So, wala na, dito na marag X na yun. So, di ay ito, gi, um, na-realize na ako later na sa HEMA di ay siya, ang zone of morphology. So, ayun, medyo nakakahiya. <laughs> medyo gamay akong score ato sa orals. But anyway, I'm just saying, dears, no, para bili mo mo follow na ako, yes, <laughs> sa akong mga lutang moments. But it happens din naman, okay? Um, and you learn from those moments, okay? So, zone of morphology, hima makitan ha, ang sabakte di ay kay zone of inhibition. Ayan, so, na nabalin ako sila. Alright, ayan, okay. So, oh my gosh, uh, memories. Anyway, okay, so again, that's your thin smear. You examine at the zone of morphology, similar with your hema. So, the zone of morphology tamo examine because your cells, again, are not overlapping, no? You can really see individual cells and your parasites are are clear also okay that's your thin film okay all right now another type of smear is your combined thick and thin film so both the thick and thin films are now found in one slide okay so you're hitting two birds with one stone or the bayan so this procedure is really really um significant or really useful especially in communities no kanang mga mga sa barrio no or mga far flung areas na mga um you know laboratories na mocator Example, mocator malarial detection, malaria detection. So if the community or the laboratory there is saving materials and reagents, so it's best to perform this because only using one slide, you can already have the two smears, okay? Ayan. So if you perform this, the thick smear should be first dehemoglobinized, of course, and it should not be in contact with your fixative, diba? Because again, we don't want that your thick smear will be fixed because again, it could lead to the difficult um, lysing of RBCs, okay? And after, pwede na silang stain together, okay? Now for examination, because the whole rationale of this is that you want to be cost effective and efficient. Pas pas imuhang pag examine, you can first you can first examine your thin smear. Diba para pag examine mo sa thin smear, if mahakita ka na nai parasite, you direct direction na kag identify, diba? Where compared naman if muna pa kag thick smear, diba mag screen pa ka if nabajud or wala, and then after dito mo thin smear pa ka. So it time, it, it consumes time, no? Compared sa thin smear mo unahon, diba? If nai parasite na, then direct na kag confirm. Okay? Alright. Um, pero if negative ang thin smear, dito pa ka lang mo thick smear. It could be because negative siya sa thin smear kay low parastim niya. Low pang amount sa parasites. Munang wala siya nakitaan sa thin smear. Pero pag sa thick smear, because larger amount of blood is used, no? Higher chances, higher likelihood of recovering your parasite. 
Okay? Alright, so that's your combined thick and thin films. So here's an example. Ayan. So um, I also taught my students and it's uh, public health before, no? Sa combined thick and thin films, no? So um, as you can see, for the ang akong gitudo na procedure nila is for from finger prick blood sample money. So you first put um, again two to three drops for your thick smear at this end of the slide and then mga mga derida pit put mubutang na kaog drop for your thin smear. So of course, akong buhaton una is the thin smear. So mo smear sa ko dayon, okay? Smear sa ko dayon og thin smear padulong dito, dito akong way. And then after that is using the edge of the slide na akong gigamit pang uh, pang smear, ako na pong kutawon ang thick smear. So nga nung giuna na ko ang thin smear. Because again, recall that thick smear kailangan pa kang 30 seconds mo kutaw, di ba? Now, what if ang 30 seconds na mo kutaw ka, dugay pa man na na time, pwedeng mo dry up ang imuhang drop of blood for your thin smear. So, pag humana ni mo thick smear kutaw, dry na ang blood diri, di nakakakreate og thin smear. Okay? So, it's best na at least, <clears throat> at least mahuman ang thin smear before ka mo kutaw sa imuhang thick smear. Because again, di ba, you need at least 30 seconds kay fresh whole blood man para ma-avoid ang fibrin strands. But if you use anticoagulated blood, okay, you don't need to kutaw, okay, you don't, you don't need to stir the drops of blood for your thick smear for 30 seconds. Kay anticoagulated man ang blood. Okay? So fresh whole blood lang 30 seconds. Okay? Alright. That's for your combined thick and thin smears. Okay. So two birds, uh, hitting two birds with one stone. Pak ganun. Okay. Alright. Alright. So those are all for finger prick <clears throat> blood samples. Now finger prick blood samples, dears, are the specimen of choice for the preparation of your thick and thin films. Uh, finger prick blood sample, good. Because your finger prick blood sample is free from anticoagulants that may distort, no, that may change your parasites and infected RBCs, all right? But you can still use naman uh, anticoagulated blood, okay? But ang, ang precaution lang is dapat you should prepare your smears immediately, okay? Dini mo siya padugayon, all right? If you use anticoagulated blood. Ang advantage po sa anticoagulated blood is you have unlimited source of sample, di ba? Pwede pa ka pila ka smears mong gamiton, okay? All right, ayan. Or pila pa ka smears mong gamiton. All right, okay. Next uh, method or next sample is your capillary tube, okay? So your capillary tube method, of course, you use your heparinized capillary tube. So ca heparinized capillary tube. Unsa my color, Ani? Na tube. Red. 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 Red, Red. okay. Red Final blue. answer? Yeah. Yes, sir. Ra red, ba? blue? Dili, sir. Red, sir. Red, sir. Red, sir. Final good? Yes, sure sir. Na, yes, sir. Sure, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good? Okay, sige. All right. So that is correct. Ayan. Very good. Ayan. So gina test na tamo again kung ano ba yun. Mapanindigan ba yun yung answer? So yung mapanindigan niyo yung answer. Pwede na po mo, kaya rin yung mapanindigan po dango sa katawo. Ha? Charak drama. Okay. All right. So again, red band. Okay. Very good. Heparinized capillary tube. Red band, okay? Kay, uh, I think not to uh, not answers ako mga previous sections na mag-ask na ako, unsan yung not color sa tube, ang answer nila kay green, okay? So, at the back of my mind, kay na-shocked ko, pero I believe, ang ilang you think kay blood collection tube. So, if blood collection tube ang ang, ang question, if it's very nice, it's of course green. Pero kung capillary tube, red band, okay? Red band ha, red band. Okay, alright, very good. So, using your capillary tube, of course, you get your sample from your finger prick blood sample. And you subject this to centrifugation, and what we're usually detecting are the microfilarii and trypanosomes. And we examine the buffy coat. Ayan, the buffy coat. So, of course, that's the first method, the buffy coat films. Okay, so, the preparation of your buffy coat films is quite dangerous. Kay, ang imong buhaton, after centrifugation, di ba, of course, you have layers formed in the microhematocrit tube, di ba? So, ang first layer is your um, plasma, then you have buffy coat, and then finally, the packed RBCs. But some resources, dears, ha, please take note, ang ilang ginabuhat, ang ilang giingon, ang first layer is a fatty layer, okay? So, ang first layer daw sa centrifuged microhematocrit tube, ang pinaka uh, taas is fatty layer, second na lang ang plasma. And your fatty layer usually is not seen, okay? So, please take note of that. So, kay Murag, muna yung sa boards. What is the first layer? Ang answer is fatty layer. Fatty layer, plasma, ang second, Third, ang buffy coat, and then fourth, ang packed RBCs. Okay? Alright. So, again, buffy coat. So, what you do to prepare your buffy coat films, at the area no, of your buffy coat, imong book on, you break the capillary tube, and then katong buffy coat, you then make a smear out of it, and then it stain. So, medyo, medyo lisod siya, no? <laughs> medyo, 
uh, medyo ano siya, medyo dangerous. I think na perform naman sa para before, if I'm not mistaken. Basta dangerous siya kay mo siyang bukon. There have been other methods na, but kanija po ang ginagamit po routinely or most of the time. Okay? So bukon ni mo siya the area of the buffy coat and then katong buffy coat imo siya ibutang og slide, make a smear and then stain. Okay? And then we look for the parasites. What we're after usually is your Eldonovani your trypanosomes, and even a fungus, your histoplasma capsulatum. Because Eldonovani and H. capsulatum usually can be confused uh, with one another, okay? Because both of the organisms can reside within macrophages or WBCs. So what we look after lang is the staining um, characteristics nila. For Leishmania, ang nuclear material is dark red purple, and it has a cytoplasm that is light blue. For histoplasma capsulatum, it doesn't have a cytoplasm. All you see is a large dot, no? Large dot of nuclear material, dark red purple, and it is surrounded by a clear halo. Ayan, so nasa halo by Beyonce. Okay, all right, ayan. So large dot of nuclear material with a clear halo. For trypanosomes, you can also see it um, in the buffy coat cells, all right? So here's an example um, of your Eldonovani. Again, those are your Eldonovani. As you can see, you can see a large dot. Uh, nasa nuclear material na purple, right? And napadyo siya cytoplasm sa kilid na light blue, no? Compared to your H. capsulatum, diba? as you can see, large dot lang of nuclear material, and you have clear halo surrounding it, okay? All right, because both of them can reside within RBCs, uh, RBC, sorry, within white blood cells, they can be confused with one another, okay? So you look at its staining characteristics. Okay, so those are for your buffy coat films, all right? So the next uh, technique using your capillary tube is what we call your QBC, quantitative buffy coat. Ayan, so nikawasin sa inyo hampritas, no? It uses a fluorochrome stain, and the question was, what is the fluorochrome stain used in your QBC? Our answer is, dapat acridine orange. Okay, acridine orange is the fluorochrome. Potassium oxalate serves as parang the more that, okay? All right, now, um, in the QBC, what we detect or what, uh, happens is the DNA and DNA of the parasite it take up no it takes up uh, the uh, fluorochrome which is acridine orange and it will emit a yellow or orange no fluorescence okay so since we're um, uh, detecting fluorescence we are using or we're going to use a UV microscope okay all right so fluorochrome ayan another example or a ver another um, example of a fluorochrome is your fit C. Nako, fit C. Okay. Now, can remember ba ba sa grading sa fit C? Ano sa matong grading for uh, brilliant apple green fluorescence? Three plus. Brilliant? Ay, four, four plus. Four, four plus. Four plus. Four plus. Okay. Nako, daganan ba students dili last time, ha? Nako Sorry. talaga. So, <laughs> okay, that's correct. Brilliant apple green. Okay, that's correct. It's four plus. Okay, very good. That's good that you remember. So, do not forget the grading, dears, sa ito mga nakalimot po sa akong na-share sa intro to micro before. Um, zero is no fluorescence. Okay, no fluorescence. One plus is faint yet unequivocal staining. All right. And two plus is apple green. Okay. 3 plus bright apple green, and then 4 plus brilliant, mas ano pa intense. So 4 plus brilliant apple green. Again, 0, no fluorescence. 1 plus faint, faint yet unequivocal. So U-N-E-Q-U-I, <laughs> B-O-C-A-L, unequivocal staining. All right. 2 plus apple green fluorescence. 3 plus bright apple green. 4 plus brilliant apple green. Ayan, please take note of that. That's where fit C, fit C grading. Fluorescein isothiocyanate. Okay, all right, ayan. But again, for QBC, what is the fluorochrome that we use? Acridine orange. So, nigawas niya sa akong boards, dears, sa akong boards, good, na question. Ang question talaga is, what is the fluorochrome used for QBC? Or what is the stain used in uh, QBC? And nalimot ko sa answer. <laughs> Ang ako na ma-remember kaya, ako shocked, familiar ni siya. Asa ni siya dapit? Okay, all right. Ano ko na nabasag, yun ako ni. Pero unsay answer, so... Ayan. So, I don't want, again, na uh, mapareha mo na ako, usik ang points. So, again, ang answer ato is acridine orange. Okay, QBC. Alright, okay. So, here's an example, di ba? Your capillary tube is already pre-coated, meaning sa sulod pa lang daan na dito ang acridine orange na ng potassium oxalate. So, pag butan ni mo sa sample sa blood, no, is centrifuge, muni siya ang layers na ma-form. And we're focusing more on the red blood cell layer, especially if you want to look for plasmodium. So as you can see, here's an, a result, no? Black background, no? So there is a layer, red blood cell, of course. So sa left is the P. vivax gametocyte, and then the right is P. falciparum gametocyte. So as you can see, di ba, lahi na shape ang plasmodium falciparum gametocyte. Why? Because this is a characteristic shape of your plasmodium falciparum, di ba? Your, the plasmodium falciparum gametocytes is described as banana-shaped, 
crescent shaped gametocytes and only plasmodium falciparum has this type of gametocytes na banana shaped and oh, uh, banana shaped or crescent shaped so press the buzzer na dayon okay so we'll discuss more about that when we go to your plasmodium species okay but p falciparum gametocytes characteristic shape banana shaped or crescent shaped and niya ragi na makitan so kung makita niyo sa question inana plasmodium species with banana shape crescent shape gamito sites na ko maghaliluya good ka praise the lord amen de ba so ang answer nato is plasmodium falciparum na ko na ko na ko okay alright so this is for QBC so as you can see the fluorescence is quite yellowish no yellow medyo pagka orange gamay okay alright ayan siki alright next uh, source is your venous blood sample so usually when we use venous blood sample it is now anticoagulated so we use anti coagulated tubes no and of course it's edta purple top tubes and usually for venous blood sample we subject that to concentration techniques and usually concentration techniques uh, we detect your microfilari okay the filarial worms okay concentration techniques but again as i've mentioned you can also use um, venous blood sample anticoagulated blood for your blood films but you should prepare it as soon as possible. Because again, if madugayan, pwedeng madistort ang parasites, pwedeng madaot po ng RBCs. All right? It will make your examination difficult and identification of your parasite also difficult. Okay? All right. Ayan. So for the first method, you have the knots concentration technique. So again, concentration technique, same uh, rationale with your stool. It's best for low um, concentration of parasites. So in this case, low microfilaremia, meaning low number of microfilarial worms um, circulating in the blood. Okay? So since a concentration technique, man, ma-recover, good siya. So what we use is 1 ml of anticoagulated blood. You mix it with 10 ml of 2% formalin. Please take note. Basin mabali ninyo, ha? 10 ml ang volume, 10 ang volume, 10 ml of 2% formalin. Okay? Alright. So since this is a, a concentration technique, we examine the sediment. Okay? So we make a smear and then we stain. Okay? Supernatant is discarded. All right. But the disadvantage lang is since we're using formalin, which serves as a fixative, it kills the larvae, the microfilarial worms. Hence, we cannot see it uh, moving. Hindi mo siya makita na galihok. Okay? All right. Ayan. So this is your knots concentration technique. Again, useful in low uh, concentration of microfilarial worms or low microfilaremia. And again, you use 1 ml of venous blood, anticoagulated blood, and 10 ml of 2% formalin. So here's an example of your procedure. You have 1 ml of your blood, 10 ml formalin, you centrifuge, you get the sediment, place on a slide, air dry, fix again, and then subject to gem sustaining. And then examine under the microscope for the characteristic microfilarial worms. Okay, and then identify the species, Wukiriria basha, Brugia basha, or whatever. Okay, all right. Again. Next um, concentration technique or uh, technique under venous blood sample is your membrane filtration. So it's still used for microfilaremia, low microfilaremia, uh, but this time you use a membrane filter. So pa ipaagi ni mo ang blood sample sa membrane filter, and then sa membrane filter dito matrap, no? the microfilarial worms will be trapped on the filter. And the filter is now what you examine under the microscope. Okay, so majority of the species of microfilari can be recovered except lang for Mansonella perstans and Ozardi because of its small size. But siyang mulapos, no, it can pass through the membrane filter. So your remedy, you can uh, you can use a membrane filter that contains a smaller size pagyod of pore, no? A smaller size na pore, mas gamay na buslot para dili makalapos ang imuhang Mansonella species, uh, kaning perstans and Ozardi, okay? It's considered to be the most sensitive method because again, you wanna ipass through, ipapass through ang blood, okay? Wala may giingon kung how much blood ang need. So, ipapass through nimo siya sa filter. So, of course, tanang parasites na pwedeng naa sa imuhang uh, blood, matrap gyud siya sa filter. So, mas daghang chances uh, na makuha dyan ang parasite, okay? But for routine use, it is expensive. That's why it's not uh, recommended, okay, for routine use. All right. Now, blood, again, is passed through a polycarbonate filter with a pore that is uh, of a size of 2 micrometer. And after, we also let uh, distilled water pass through the film, a film, the filter to lyse the RBCs because we don't want the RBCs. What we want are the parasites lang, the microfilarial worms, okay? So that's membrane filtration technique okay so here's an example no so this is the filter holder and then this is an example of the membrane filter used the millipore membrane filter so again sa filter ka mukwag sample to be examined under the microscope for the filarial worms okay all right so those are your uh, blood examination techniques so quite um, a lot dinaman quite a handful 
because then naman, di ba, blood is the second most commonly submitted sample for parasitic studies. Okay. So before we proceed to the next sample, dears, do you have any questions or any clarifications before we proceed? Okay. We're almost done, ah. Sputum na yun. Yes, we're almost done. Okay. All right. Okay. So wala. All right. Uh, joke. Sa to. Yes. Nani raise your hands or sa to nani chat? Cleo, yes. Um, like as far as blood is concerned, but sir, um, uh -huh. like, diba, there should be a specific time period you have to collect the ah, blood okay. when you're trying to Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct, no? Thank you for that, Clay. Yes, um, but ato na discuss more when we go to the different parasites. That's correct, especially for your filarial worms. No, if you can remember, filarial worms have their periodicity. No, some of them will exhibit nocturnal periodicity, like mas daghan sila sa blood pagkagabi. Eh. Napoy uban na diurnal sila sa morning. Napoy uban na dili mo exhibit tog periodicity. Meaning pwede siya makuha or ma recover siya uh, any time of the day. Yes, that's correct. There is uh, Depending on the parasite that you want to recover. Also, sa malaria na ay mga paroxysms, no. So we'll discuss more of that when we go to the individual parasites, na. So when we discuss filarial worms, when we discuss also malaria, okay. But that's correct. That's a good uh, point to um, emphasize, okay. That's correct. All right. Ayan. Um, yes. Sige. Any more questions or chika? <clears throat> chika. Okay. All right. Ayan. Ganan kiko sa akong ano. Home background, no, no to 174. Dumagete, yes, Manisha. Charat, okay. Uh, tropical, charat, yes. Any more questions before we proceed to the remaining specimens? Um, okay, all right, sige, sige. So we'll continue with your sputum, no? So for sputum, diba, this is your lua. Yes, naman. So mga lua. All right. So for sputum, uh, what are the possible parasites that we can recover from sputum. The first one is, of course, the migrating larvae of your Ascaris, hookworm, and strongy. Because these three are known as the parasites or the nematodes that exhibit heart to lung migration, meaning part of their life cycle, mabot sila sa heart ug lungs. Okay? So, pagabot sa lungs, no, pwedeng uh, magkatol yung mong throat, no, mabot sila sa yung throat, magkatol, pwedeng yung mong siyang ma-expectorate. Okay? So, ma makitan siya sa yung sputum. Yes. So, ash. Heart to lung migration. Second mnemonic pa. Do not be confused with ash and hats. Your hats are your soil-transmitted helminths. Ang ash ni mo is your heart to lung migration. Okay? Please take note. Again, ash, heart to lung migration, ang hats, soil transmitted helminths. Okay? So, sila rang tulo ang mo-exhibit o heart to lung migration. Ash. Okay? So, pwede silang ma-recover sa imuhang sputum. Okay. Next, you have Paragonimus westermani ova. So, if you can recall the common name of your Paragonimus westermani, it's the oriental Oh, okay, oriental lung fluke. Okay, so since oriental lung fluke, lungs man yung target. So again, still the same, pwede siyang maluwa sa sputum. Okay, and the sputum is described as viscous, no? Uh, streaked with blood, na bled, bled, na siya blood, okay? And tinged, na siya brownish flecks. Now, these brownish flecks are the ova of Paragonimus westermani. And it's described as parang iron fillings, okay? Iron fillings, all right. So, na feeling sang iron, sana all charot. Okay, so brownish flecks, again, which are the cluster of eggs of uh, Paragonimus westermani, described as sputum having an appearance of iron fillings, or na iron fillings sa sputum. All right, so since we're talking about sputum appearance, okay, so sa bacteria ta, kinsa mo tong bacteria na if magkasakit ka, ang imong sputum is described as rust colored, mura siya kalawang or taya. Okay, rust colored sputum. S. pneumoniae. Okay, very good. Your Streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay, so kana block ani Dre? Um, G sir. G. Okay, very good. Your Streptococcus pneumoniae. Do not forget, no. Once you develop infections with S pneumoniae, your sputum is described as rust colored. On today, na type of pneumonia ang ginakos sa S pneumoniae. Ma remember pa? Ano sa man? Na type? Low bar. Low okay. bar. All right. Very good. Low bar pneumonia. That is correct. Low bar pneumonia, strep pneumo, again, rust colored sputum. Very good. Now, kinsa ning bacteria naman, na ang, if magka sakit ka ani, your sputum is described as currant jelly, marasag jelly ace. Klebsiella pneumonia. Okay. Very good. Klebsiella pneumonia. That is correct. No, do not forget those types of sputum, dears, sa mga bacteria. Currant jelly, no, jelly ace, marasag jelly ace, your Kleb pneumo. And of course, you have rust-colored strep pneumonia. 
Okay? All right. Please take note. Very good. Okay. All right. So that's the second parasite, Paragonimus westermani. Next, you also have Echinococcus granulosus, possible uh, during pulmonary hydatid disease. Okay? So possible na siya. Uh, we'll discuss more about that when we go to Echinococcus na mga parasites sa tapeworm. Okay? And of course, protozoa um, in the phases of Entamoeba isolitica, um, especially in disseminated na amibiasis, kaya ang Entamoeba isolitica, siya ng laaga na parasite ni Mono. <laughs> <laughs> so ang laga na amoeba. Pwede siyang muabot sa other organs, no? And disseminated amoebiasis. And then you have also Cryptosporidium parvum, oocyst, and the non-pathogenic uh, protozoa, Trichomonas tenax, and Entamoeba gingivalis, your resident commensal sa inyong baba. Okay? So pwede siyang mapil pag expectorate mo sa sputum. Okay? Alright, ayan. Now we go na to processing. Uh, picture pa dahi, sorry. Uh, you have here example of your hooklets, echinococcus, and you have the iron fillings. So, wala ko kitag sputum na nai iron fillings. So, is, imagine na lang na kanisla na iron fillings nasa mong sputum. So, inani yung appearance sa paragonimus uh, na infection. Okay? Alright, ayan. Now, we go na to processing again. The first morning specimen pa rin is the best specimen to examine because again, this is the specimen that has accumulated overnight, no? While natulog ang patient or it's well concentrated yun. So, makitaan yun ang parasites that could be there, no? It's well concentrated. That's why uh, first morning specimen is the best, the best specimen to examine. Okay. Now, if the patient cannot expectorate, example, ka ng um, gulang na or uh, na ay problem ba, whatever, then you can let them inhale no, an inductant such as 10% NaCl or H2O2. Now, these uh, substances will irritate, no, in a way, your lungs and will help them expectorate. Mak makatabang siya paluwa nila. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, spit or swallow. Ganun. Charot. <laughs> Ganun. Okay. Okay. So, spit. <laughs> Wait. Sa oh my gosh. Okay. Inductance. 10% NaCl or H2O2. <sighs> okay, Mark. Okay. Alright. So, again, this will help them spit <laughs> the sputum. Okay. So, makatabang siya uh, paluwa. Okay. Alright. Ayan. Sige. Now, if the sputum is thick, okay, so we don't want na baga yung sputum kay pwedeng matrap ang mga parasites within the mucus of the sputum. So, we can add these substances, 3% NaCl, uh, NaCl, 3% N-acetylcysteine, or 3% NaOH. Now, these reagents are known as digestants. Okay? So, pwede silang mu liquefy sa specimen. Now, in your pretest natin question na uh, this can be used as both a digestant and a decontaminant, our answer there is 3% NaOH. Supposed to be that was a question in Bakte, per ako lang appeal no? So, nigawa siya sa board spot, not in our time, mga previous board exams. Um, ang, ang question kay Kato, because if you can recall in your AFB processing, um, appeal ning liquefying sputum, no, for AFB. And what uh, the most commonly used reagent is a partner, partner na 3% uh, N-acetylcysteine and sodium hydroxide. The N-acetylcysteine, ang main function is the digestant dito. And ang sodium hydroxide kay decontaminant. Okay? So, sila ang pair good for AFB processing sa sputum. But um, resources, other references has also mentioned that sodium hydroxide can work as a digestant. So, ang answer at itong question works as both a digestant and a decontaminant is 3% sodium hydroxide. Okay? So, purpose again is to liquefy the specimen. Because again, if too thick, no, daghang mucus, it could be that your parasites can be trapped within those mucus strands. So, dili na noon, um, may examine properly. Okay? So, if you also tried kanang taking kanang mga mucolytic um, mga tamba, like um, mga ambroxol, no, kanang mga pang expectorate, um, the main active ingredient there is, of course, N-acetyl L-cysteine. Because N-acetyl L-cysteine is a mucolytic. Magpa uh, humok sa imuhang uh, blema para mas maluwa ni mo. So same concept here sa itong sputum specimens. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, concentrated stain specimens of your induced sputums, we can also use that, especially for detection of your pneumocystis uruvetsi. Now, if you can remember, pneumocystis uruvetsi, again, is uh, the most common cause, diba, of pneumonia among uh, among AIDS patients or immunocompromised patients, diba? Now, pneumocystis uruvetsi has, uh, for, for the longest time, was classified as a parasite. But now, it has been reclassified to a fungi or fungus na siya. But we're going to still discuss uh, pneumocystis um, in this lecture, I believe. So, in the later mga lectures, alright? So, again, pneumocystis uruvetsi, most common cause of pneumonia among immunocompromised patients, okay? Especially sa AIDS na mga patient. Okay. Okay, all right. Ayan. So that's for uh, your sputum. So sputum, again, don't forget ash, no? You have Paragonimus westermani. Sputum is tinged with blood, brownish flecks, iron fillings, no? Echinococcus granulosus, and mga protozoa. 
first morning specimen is the best, no? And of course, you have digestants and acetylcysteine and 3% sodium hydroxide. If both, ang answer, ang question is both works as a digestant and decontaminant, our answer is three, uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay, all right, ayan. Now, next specimen, we have urine and urogenital tract specimens. So similar to your sputum, first morning urine pa rin ang best no, specimen for parasite recovery due to the concentration again of parasites overnight. So same rationale with your um, first morning sputum. So first morning urine, ayan, sige, AUBF ta, makaremember pa ba? Mm, AUBF dyan, okay. So first morning urine is the recommended um, specimen or specimen of choice for what test sa imong AUBF just give one dagan man to no pero kato yung pinaka ano pregnancy yeah. okay yeah okay your pregnancy test very good so um you have G ang sana block tong usa G to na nan G gihapon sir okay all right very good so very good don't forget ha preg test Ang imuhang required specimen is first morning urine because again concentrated no so tanang uh, analytes concentrated sa first morning urine so same here pod parasites are concentrated uh, because again it, it has accumulated overnight ang first morning urine okay all right now again urine urogenital tract what we are really after is your Trichomonas vaginalis our um, sexually transmitted parasite the most frequent parasite that we, that we can recover from these specimens okay now Trichomonas vaginalis rounded globular structure it has jerky tumbling motility so we'll, we'll discuss more about it when we go to uh, uh, Trichomonas na discussion sa mga flagellates Okay, all right, ayan. Now, urogenital tract specimens, mga vaginal discharge, penile, urethral, no? You should dilute it with a drop of saline and examine for uh, motile organisms under LPO and reduce illumination. So what you're really after is trichomonas vaginalis. And if you want to see its undulating membrane, you can shift to HPO, all right, or high drive power. Okay, all right. So again, recall, remember, culture techniques gahapon. What is the recommended media of choice for your T vaginalis? According to Strasinger. What's that? What's that? What's that? Recommended uh, letter D. Schneider. Your. Dilly Schneider. Dilly Schneider. Schneider is for Leishmania. Diba? Diamonds. <laughs> okay, very good. The diamonds medium. Ang Schneider is sa Leishmania. Okay, so. Sige lang na. Medyo na mixed up na. Okay, but again, for trichomonas, vaginalis, recommended media of choice is Diamond. So according to Strasinger, 6th edition, katong green na book. Okay, all right. Ayan. So again, that's for the urogenital tract specimens. So aside from trichomonas, of course, um, for trichomonas identification, you don't need to stain your smears because, again, these are from urogenital tract specimens. Now, if you already see katong mga jerky motility, na undulating membrane, then you can already point out, point that this is trichomonas vaginalis. You don't need to stain it. Okay? All right. But aside from trichomonas vaginalis, we can also recover your Wukiriria bancrofti, diba? your microfilarial worm. If you can remember, these microfilarial worms, they reside within your lymphatic vessels. So, ilang i-obstruct, no? Ilang i-obstruct ng lymphatic vessels. What happens is your lymph fluid may go out, no? And may be expressed in tissues or even sa urine. And urine will have a characteristic appearance na milky, chyluric urine, okay? And chyluric urine will also, you can recover na the microfilari there, okay? Of example, Wukiriria bancrofti. So aside from Wukiriria, you can also see schistosoma, hematobium, of course, your bladder fluke. Diba, they reside in the gallbla uh, gallbladder, sorry, urinary bladder, of course. And um, it's best to collect urine between noon, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Because at this time, no, uh, peak, no, peak, uh, Egg, does the kang eggs ma collect at this time? Okay, you can collect a lot of eggs at this time. Okay, and of course, she's also hematobium associated with hematuria or hematuria because um, if you can remember the appearance of the egg of she's also hematobium, it has a terminal spine, na siya spine sa end, di ba, of the egg, so very sharp. So, pwede pag pass niya sa bladder, malacerate ang bladder, masamad ang bladder, it can lead to bleeding, no? So, na blood sa mong ihi. All right? Okay. And of course, lastly, Enterobis vermicularis, uh, the most commonly, uh, most common fecal contaminant sa mong ihi. All right? Your Enterobis vermicularis, especially in females, di ba, where your urethral opening, as magawas ang ihi, and your anus are quite in close proximity. So, medyo dual sila. So, of course, it can introduce the eggs of Enterobius to your urine. Okay? So, that's urine. 
and urogenital tract specimens. Okay, all right. Next, we have tissue aspirates. No? So for tissue aspirates, most common in the Philippines is, of course, liver aspirate because liver um, aspirates, again, is used for detection of entamoeba histolytica in cases of hepatic amoebic abscess. So meaning the most common site of your extra-intestinal amoebiasis is, of course, your liver. Wala nang iba. So liver yun ang pinaka-common. Meaning ang amoeba, Naabot na dito. From the intestine, <laughs> naabot na siya sa liver. Okay? And it causes hepatic amoebic abscess. Okay? Alright. So, most common site of extra-intestinal amoebiasis, wala nang iba, is your liver. Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, that's also common in the Philippines. Most common because, again, um, endemic din naman ang amoebiasis diri. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, also, we can use it for the recovery of echinococcus granulosus. Again, when you go to echinococcus, uh, hydatid cysts no, of echinococcus granulosus can spread from a lot of, uh, to a lot of organs put in the body. Okay, so pag-aspirate na to, Anna, we can see the contents of the um, hydatid cysts. Okay, all right, ayan. Now, another aspirate is your duodenal aspirate, uh, we, which is usually used to recover jarja and strongy. But for duodenal aspirates, ang jarja na motility, falling leaf motility niya is, again, rarely seen, but strongy is highly motile, yung larva. Okay, all right. Again, we centrifuge to concentrate the sample. And uh, if there is a delay in examination, if within two hours, delay pa siya examine you need to preserve the sample in PV, uh, in 5 to 10% formally, okay? So you have duodenal aspirates, okay? Gikan sa mong duodenum, sa small intestine. And uh, still, um, talking about the duodenum, no? We have this test known as our duodenal, duodenal capsule technique or your entero test or string test, okay? Now, in this string test, diba, you can remember, the patient is given a yarn, and at the end of the yarn, I'm a capsule. Yang kan untung capsule, okay? And then ang yarn imo ipatapot sa kilid sa nawong sa patient. Then after four hours, ayan, you then um, retrieve the yarn, mong birahon ang yarn, and then ang um, nagtapot, okay? The mucoidal uh, stuff na nag tapot, nag stick sa end of the yarn is now the duodenal contents. And that's what we examine under the microscope. And what you can see are again strongy, jarja, cryptosporidium, microsporidia, and the eggs of clonorchis. The recall clonorchis sinensis is your Chinese liver fluke. Now, it could reside in your gallbladder, di ba? So, during digestion, di ba, bile is introduced to the duodenum. So, pwedeng maapil ang eggs of clonorchis there. So, that's why pwede po siyang ma-recover si muhang string test or entero test, okay? So, again, I yarn, imo siya ipakaon sa patient. After pila ka-hours, imo na siyang ibton or imo siyang i-retrieve and then examine the contents of the duodenal um, con the duodenal contents for the parasite. Usually, this is um, typically used no, for jarja for Georgia lamblia. Very useful for Georgia lamblia. Okay, all right, ayan. Now again, if the specimen is still the same, cannot be examined within one hour, you then preserve it either, uh, we then preserve by using formalin or PVA. All right, okay, ayan. And bone marrow aspirates, no? Uh, usually, again, we're detecting your blood parasites, Leishmania, Plasmodium, Babesia. Uh, we process it similar to blood. We then subject it to blood stains, okay? Um, rites or gemsa. Okay, all right, ayan. So, um, yeah, that's for your uh, uh, for your tissue aspirate. So, here's an example of your string test, ayan. So, this is the gelatinous capsule na kanon sa patient, okay? And then, of course, ang picas N kay nasa face niya. So, ma-digest niya siya sa stomach, and then, of course, peristalsis, maabot siya sa duodenum. Now, after four hours, i-retrieve siya, okay? And then, kani siya, kay wala na, of course, ang yarn na lang mabilin. The yarn should be color yellow-green because it means... Or it will indicate that abut siya sa duodenum. It reached the duodenum because in the duodenum there's already bile, diba? And bile will give the yarn a yellow green color. Okay? So that will give an indication na, okay, the yarn reached the duodenum and it's uh, fit for examination. Because if wala, if this is yellow green, then it could mean that koto siya sa stomach. So you need to repeat the procedure na put. Okay? Or the sample will not be used for examination. Okay? Kaya wala siya nakabut sa duodenum. Okay? All right. Ayan. So that's for tissue aspirates. Okay. Next is for your CSF. Of course, CSF. For CSF, you need to centrifuge it at 7,000 G for 10 minutes, okay, to con concentrate your parasites. Parasites that we can recover, of course, the trypomastigotes of the trypanosoma species, okay, because they can um, disseminate to your meninges, to your CSF. And, of course, your... Um, Trophozoids of your nagleria, your free living amoeba. Okay, if you can recall, diba, pre test pod question what is 
the causative agent of your primary amoebic meningoencephalitis? Press the buzzer. Atong answer is Nagleria foliary. So the trophozoites of Nagleria can be recovered in your CSF. And there's also a nematode, your parastrongulus or angiostrongulus cantonensis, you can recall. Iba ilang larvae also can be demonstrated in the CSF because parastrongulus causes eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. So we'll talk about that when we go to the nematodes, okay? All right, ayan. Now, again, examination of CSF should be done as soon as possible or within 20 minutes because if you must prolong, pwedeng ma-destroy ang tripomastigotes and even the trophozoids of Negleria. So it, it will be um, unsatisfa unsatisfactory na for examination, okay? All right, ayan. So again, that's for CSF. Tripomastigotes, your Negleria, and even parastrongulus. Sila mga makita si mong CSF. Okay. All right. Now, last na, last specimen is your tissue biopsy, starting first with your muscle biopsy. So muscle biopsy, uh, we perform this for the diagnosis of trichinella spiralis. So if you can remember, diba, trichinella spiralis, usually, ang atong muscle dyan is mga muscle, muscle, diba? Muscle, ayan. Because your trichinella spiralis, they reside, no, within the skeletal muscles, depending on the stage of trichinella spiralis, diba? Okay, all right. Aside from trichinella spiralis, you can also detect tenia solium and spirometra in cases of cysticercosis and spirometra organosis respectively. So kanis lang ng mga situation, ang mahitabo is the larval stages of these parasites will reside within the skeletal muscles, okay? So I will discuss more about that when we go to these tapeworms, okay? All right. Ayan. Now, um in trichinosis, uh, muscle biopsy again, um, it should be examined by compressing the tissue between two slides, okay? And then examine under LPO. But because this uh, procedure will only be positive Two to three weeks after illness, do kay pa. So, may rely tog other lab tests. Okay? All right. But this is your procedure. So, you compress the tissue. Okay? So, similar siya with your mga tissue techniques yun sa histology. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, again, here is your um, T. spiralis muscle biopsy. So, as you can see, it's within the skeletal muscles. But, di ba, sa yung pretest na ti question, adult trichinella spiralis resides in the Kung siya answer na to ato. Small Basta intestine. Ad okay, very good. Small, Small intestine. intestine. Because ang morecides in mong skeletal muscles are your larva. Okay? So, if ang question is adult trichinella spiralis, small intestine. Kung larva of trichinella spiralis, skeletal muscles. Okay? So, I have to emphasize kay Basin in the future ba, magawas ang question. Nga usually mang good if magsige na mag-review, no? Basta murag makadevelop na huwag habit maka-develop mo habit na basta trichinella spiralis diretso na muscle 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 diba pero again uh, take note of the question basta adult gani ang iyang habitat kay small intestine pero kung larva it's within your skeletal muscles okay so muscle biopsy okay all right taka lang parang may nag ano yes ah okay all right ni chika dai si jam no problem jam no problems okay ra gyud okay all right Marapukag others jam. Check out. Eh. Okay, all right. Ayan. Sige, so that's for uh, muscle biopsy. Okay, again, usually for chicanella spiralis. But again, take note ha. Take note of the question. Larva of chicanella spiralis ang makitan sa skeletal muscles. Pero kung adult, small intestine. Okay, very good. Okay, next you have rectal biopsy. Rectal biopsy, what we're after is your schistosoma, japonicum, and mansoni. Um, these eggs can be deposited, no? on the rectal tissue. Especially if wal wala siya na-recover sa stool, it could be na-deposit siya sa rectal tissue. Okay? So we then get a sample of the rectal tissue to look for these eggs. So these are the schistosoma eggs that can be recovered from your stool. Okay? All right. Ayan. And last, uh, next is your skin biopsy. Your skin biopsy, also known as your skin snips, ayan, is a specimen of choice for the detection of Oncocerca volvulus, primarily on Coserca volvulus. So as you can see, um, di ba nagwas po yung pretest? Skin snips ang answer ato. But aside from on Coserca volvulus, pwede po ninyong makitaan si Mansonella. Okay? So what you do is, ayan, so you raise a portion of the skin using a tip of the needle and then using a razor or pwedeng um, uh, yeah, sharp blade or razor, you then slice the skin. Okay? Uh, dapat dili siya magdugo ra at basta na fluid na mugawas gikan sa infection okay and then you then examine it and uh, you then examine no following mga tissue processing techniques okay yung mga histotech okay all right so again skin snips skin biopsy specimen of choice for on coserca volvulus detection okay so mo answer sa to ang ano pretest okay all right ayan so that's for skin biopsy now um again lymph node aspirate and chancre fluid 
uh, we can demonstrate your trypanosomes because trypanosoma can cause also uh, chancre, no? Chancre, ayan. So since we're talking about chancre, ayan. Sige, chancre sa bacteria. Kinsa tong bacteria na makakos man chancre? Or the organism behind chancre? Uh, Hemophilus decree. Chancre, H3. I okay. <laughs> Kinsa mo? Okay. Kinsa mo ng chancre? Kinsa mo ng chancre? Ito ang nidocrease, sir. Dinidocrease, sure. sir. Yes, sir. H-docrease, sir. Chunker? Ay. Sure, sure nag-yod? H-docrease. Mona, sir. Final answer? Yes, sir. Mona, sir. Mona, Final, sir. sir. Okay, alright. Sige. So, the correct answer there, dear, chunker is uh, usually sa bacteria, ang makakos ana is your syphilis, treponema pallidum. Di ba? Remember, IS din natin, mga syphilis serology, chancre, primary syphilis, one of the uh, results, no? one of the symptoms that we can see in primary syphilis is the formation of chancre, no? Trepanema pallidum. But kung chancroid, ayan, chancroid, dito na si, kinsa man? Chancroid. Hemophilus ducreyi. Ayan, hemophilus ducreyi. Chancroid. Hemophilus ducreyi. So basically, you're saying chancre is parang the original one, okay? And if nice suffix na oid, it means chancre-like. So example, chancroid, chancre-like, okay? So ang chancre, again, chancre is your trepanema pallidum, subspecies pallidum, syphilis. Chancroid is H. ducreyi, okay? So same rin na siya po sa erisepelas and erisepeloid. Ayan, so kinsa may nagkakos sa erisepelas? Bacteria. S okay, very good. Your S pyogenes. Very good. Erisepelas. Okay. Um, it's S pyogenes. So don't forget how to remember. Erisepelas, de ba? A S ang sa last. So it's caused by group A strep. Oh, de ba? Erisepelas, A S sa last. It's caused by group A strep. Pero ang erisepeloid is caused by who or unsan organism? Uh, Rusho. Oh, <laughs> Rusho, yes, that's correct. Okay. Erisepelotrix, Rusho Padi. Okay, don't forget that, dear sa erisepelas and erisepeloid. So, how do I remember? Erisepelas, again, AS, group A strep. Erisepeloid, Lloyd. So, it's caused by erisepelo, erisepelothrix. Okay. Erisepelothrix, Rusho Padi, erisepeloid. Okay. Very good. Please take note of that. Okay. All right. Um, biopsies from liver, spleen, bone marrow. Usually, um, we get the sample if the patient is under under is suffering from visceral leishmaniasis. So this is the deadly form of leishmaniasis, and we look for the Leishman Donovan bodies. Okay, so we'll discuss more about that when we go to leishmaniasis. Okay, now biopsy tissues again, it's not recommended that you put formalin in it. Uh, PVA lang atong gamito na fixative. Okay, all right. Ayan. But again, basa mga tissues usually biopsy process it as histo technique. Okay, uh, yung mga histotechnic na methods. Okay, but again, ang fixative lang na gamiton is PVA. All right, okay. Now, filarial worms again, still because they reside in your lymph fluids, uh, lymph lymphatic system, pwede siyang makita sa lymph nodes. Okay, and corneal scrapings, of course, um, if you want to detect acanthamoeba keratitis. Acanthamoeba again is one of the free living amoeba. Kuyog ni Nigleria, di ba? So we'll discuss, uh, th that's our next topic next week. Okay? So it can cause keratitis. So mag-inflame yung mukhang cornea. Alright, so aside from kakanthamiba, uh, keratitis, no? Uh, what is this bacteria? Or kinsan yung bacteria po na known to cause keratitis? Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. Okay, all right, very good. Ang dami nun ha, ang daming blocks dun. Okay, that's correct. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Very good. Please take note of that. So, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is well known to cause keratitis po. Okay, so Pseudomonas aeruginosa, no? Mga biochem niya, don't forget, oxidative, no? Grows well at 42 degrees Celsius. Um, Stetrimide agar for isolation. You also have, uh, once upon a man, uh, monotrichos, no? Um, bacteria. And then, um, Daghan pa, di ba? Releasing pigments, pyoverdin, pyocyanin, pyomelanin. So please don't forget about pseudomonas. Okay? Alright. So atong best tea. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. That's for bacteria, keratitis. But for a parasite, you have acanthamoeba keratitis. And what we use or what we get na specimen is 
corneal scrapings. Okay, corneal scrapings. And of course, last reminder, disclaimer na to dears. Aside from the preparation of blood films for detection of malaria, we also have one stat order, and that is the examination of CSF for free-living amoeba, especially nagleria or acanth amoeba. Because um, the examination of CSF, again, dears, especially for nagleria, is very important that you do immediately because usually, most often than not, those affected by nagleria uh, they die. Fatal good siya. Okay, fatal siya in 95% of the cases. So it's important that you examine immediately para matambalan magani um, as soon as possible. Okay, so kanis lang doon na testing orders ang considered stat. Okay, mga immediate dapat na procedures in parasitology. Uh, blood films, examination preparation for malaria, and examination of CNS um, specimens. Mga CS, uh, CSF, brain biopsy bar, whatever. Okay, all right. And here are your pictures of your LD bodies. Again, similar again sa ganina, di ba? All right. So it's within your uh, WBCs. These are your Leishman Donovan bodies and your corneal scraping. So using a forceps, imo scrape ang surface sa cornea. Okay. And then you can already see the trophozoites of your Acantha miba. Okay, all right. And that's the end na, yes, of your part one of para. No, medyo TMI na, part one pala. Okay, so uh, those are all for introduction and the different um, uh, specimens, no, for parasitic examination. Okay, so before we end, uh, do you have any clarifications, dears, uh, before we end? Yes, Cleo. Now, curious for uh, uh, the muscle biopsy part. Um, uh, what's the difference uh, spirometra mm. that causes sparganosis to the bilatum uh, sparganosis? Ah, okay. Ang sa spirometra mang good. Uh, we'll discuss that again when tape forms. No, ang uh, spirometra is. Uh, pwede siya na makuha siya from other uh, like accidental maguta sa spirometra if i can remember it correctly no kaya pwede siya we're not the true host of spirometra okay ang true host sa spirometra kay mga um 